We are glad you guys are joining us via live stream, and we hope to see you all in person very soon. So glory to God, that's what we're believing God for. We will keep everybody out there posted on when we're resuming back uh, with live services. So glory to God. But thank God we have the technology to do this type of service, live stream. You know, we will never, you know, the Word of God tells us the Word will not be changed. So chained. So it doesn't matter what circumstance we're going through or what's trying to come against us as a body of believers, the Word will always go forth. Amen. So while you guys are sitting at home, you know what I say every week, you know, it's time to worship the Lord. It doesn't matter if you're in this place or your home. Get on your feet, you know, start praising God. Let whatever you've been dealing with this week since we saw you guys on Sunday just kind of melt away. Let the words that we're going to sing through praise and worship tonight minister to your hearts and just surrender to God. So, Father, we come to you as touching tonight's service saying we're believing by faith for the anointing, Father, on your word. Father, that as each of us has ready ears to hear your word with receptive hearts, Father, we, th we know that revelation will come, and we thank you for that, Father. We, think, we thank you for impartations by your spirit of revelation knowledge to your word, and we're believing that we will receive something tonight, and I thank you, Father, for this service. I thank you for everybody that's listening and watching via live stream, and we thank you for meeting everybody tonight exactly at their point of need, in Jesus' name, amen. So this first song, it's familiar to you guys, but I was just kind of thinking on the way over. You know, the enemy is still in the business of trying to bring fear. And the Word of God tells us that God hasn't give us, given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Therefore, we know that fear is not from God. It's from the enemy. It is the opposite and the enemy of faith. And we are called as believers to walk by faith. And when we feel fear come upon us, we need to recognize it and realize that we are no longer slaves to it because it's not from God. And God has given us that spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, not one of fear. Amen? Glory to God. Split 
the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Thank God we don't have to deal with fear anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good, right? And, you know, if, if you think about what we just sang in that song, No Longer Slaves to Fear, and then talked about the love of God, you know, I said this morning in um, Faith and Healing School that if believers got a revelation of how deep God loves us and how much he made provision for us to walk in victory, we would never, ever, ever, ever have to uh, deal with the enemy trying to come against us. We would know that no matter what tries to rise up, we have the victory. So let's endeavor to do that tonight. We're going to sing the song, another song about God's love. Just let it minister to you and just realize the depth and the breadth, breadth of how much God loves you. Amen. that church? Do you believe how much God loves you? Amen. Like I said, believers need to get a revelation of that. We need to have just deeper, deeper an understanding of the love of God, literally. You know, I know it's hard to wrap your head around it, but God loves us so much. Amen. <laughs>
This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. give you praise. All that I adore is in you. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way in me. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all. My heart, I worship you. All I have within me, I give you praise. All that I adore is in. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath I'm awake. Oh, we missed that song there, we missed the verse. It's a new song for me, I never play it, so glory to God. So we'll stop there, we'll um, actually receive our tithes and offerings, so, and then we'll play it again the right way. So hallelujah, there's, there's plenty of ways for you guys to sow into our offering. Uh, so you can actually text your offering to 732-856-5050, and we will get it first time through it. Uh, maybe your first time, you're just going to have to uh, set up your account, and then after that, you'll be good to go. And then uh, you can also go online to uh, www.abundantgracechurch.com, hit the giving tab, drop down that menu, and we can, uh, you can uh, facilitate your giving there as well. So glory to God. Let's believe God tonight for a good... Ooh, we just, we good? We're having uh, some technical issues with the sound in the microphone tonight. But Satan, we bind you in your attempts to come against this service here on live stream, and we bind you up and shut you down in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, for a good offering tonight, Father, as people gave out of a cheerful heart, Father, and sowed into the good ground here at Abundant Grace Church. We know that that seed they sown will produce for them. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. It shall come back to them as multiplied seed. And we thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're good, Tom? All right, we're good, so. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. All I have within me, I give you. is in you. Lord, I give you my heart. I 
I give you my soul I live for you alone Every breath that I take Every moment I'm away Lord, have your way in me Lord, have your way in me Lord, have your way in me All right, hallelujah. Let's get into the word tonight. Just give me guys, just give me a couple seconds here guys and we will switch it up. I don't know whether you guys know this a lot or not, but the live stream is a little different are here. So, God, hallelujah. All right. How many of you guys know what we've been talking about for, well, on and off through the holidays for about 10 weeks? I think this is number nine or 10 or something like that. We've been talking about and been camped out in the book of 2 Timothy. So have your Bibles. Uh, turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 2. I want to start in verse 14, which was a little before where we left off last week, because I want to do a, sl a small review as we get into what we're going to talk about tonight. So as, while you guys are doing that, we're going to pray. So Father, we come to you releasing faith to hear from you tonight. Yeah, we're still... Uh... Sorry, guys. No, nope, we're in. All right, so where were we? Let's start off again in prayer. We're... Uh... I don't, we don't know what's going on, but we know Satan is bound, and he cannot come against his service. So we will get the message out. So glory to God. We thank you, Father, tonight, as you meet each and every person exactly at their point of need, that it will produce for them. Their lives would change and be touched by your word, and we thank you for that. We thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit to meet us on the inside, pointing us in a direction to change. And we thank you for it all. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14 says this, Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord, not to strive about words, to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. So who is Timothy to remind? Again, this is for those of you who haven't been with us, for you know, just the sake of a, a broad overview, this is uh, the Apostle Paul ministering to his son in the faith, Timothy, uh, at a season in Timothy's life where things were going uh, chaotic, where things were going haywire. The people closest to him re re, um, deserted him in the middle of persecution by the Roman Empire and Nero as the emperor, and Christians were literally being killed for their faith. So the people closest to Timothy had ran away, got out of Dodge, and deserted him. And uh, Timothy was encouraged by Paul earlier on in, in 2 Timothy to surround himself with new people. Find others that will be faithful, that in due season they will also be able to preach the gospel. So Timothy was being encouraged by Paul to continue going down the road of ministry for the Lord. Not to give up, but to go on and find new people. So and again, for the sake of time, just go back and watch our, our messages on Facebook or on YouTube at AGC TV One, and you can kind of cover the ground that we're already covered. So, but Timothy was being encouraged by Paul to remind who? To remind those new people he was to surround himself. And what was he to remind them to do? The word strive, we looked at this last week, and again, I wanted to touch on it again this week, was the word strive in this verse of Scripture means to be argumentative or contentious. So Paul was exhorting Timothy to remind those around them to be careful of the words you were saying. Don't be argumentative. Don't be contentious. You don't have to win every battle with somebody that you have a difference of opinion with. Does this sound like anything that's going on in the world today? Right? I, um, I did a message on Sunday talking about the power of words that are coming out of mouth, the words we speak, and how powerful they are to either build up or destroy, and it's our choice. You know, the Word of God in James tells us that no man can tame a tongue, but that doesn't mean that your tongue can't be tamed, 
but it has to be tamed supernaturally. It has to be done in the realm of the Spirit. You have to be able to get a hold of what you're saying by changing what you're hearing, what you're putting in on the inside. And Paul is telling Timothy to remind them the people he was going to surround himself, not to be argumentative and be contentious. Because when we do that, we can actually turn people away from Christ. Look, I know many of you are working with, living close to, neighbors, whatever, that are unbelievers. Or maybe they're believers that are, are hooked into some false believing, right? Um, they're not sold out to the 100% uncompromised Word of God. They believe bits and pieces that they want to believe. They don't believe all of the Word. And what they talk about in the context of the things of God doesn't line up with everything you believe. But we don't have to strive to be argumentative and contentious with them. We don't have to fight with them stressing our point till hopefully we change their mind because there's a good chance you won't what really ministers to people is not what we say it's how we live or by what we do you know when people see you living the lifestyle that you've talked about they see you they're seeing you being a doer of the word that ministers to people when we just sit there and try to argue with them to get them to line up to the way we believe, we can literally push them away and turn them away from Christ. So that's why we cannot be argumentative. We could pray for them. We could pray for revelation knowledge of, uh, for them into the truth of God's word right? But we don't have to argue with them. We don't have to be argumentative. We don't have to be contentious. We don't have to demand we're right. And all we're going to do, like I said, is push them away. That's why Timothy was encouraged by Paul in verse 14 to remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. We do not want to ruin the people we're speaking to as we're trying to minister to them Jesus Christ. It's not a good thing, right? When we're argumentative, demanding about what we believe rather than loving. Now, I'm not telling anybody whatsoever to, to give in to what those people are believing if they're believing something that's incorrect or false. I'm just telling, that, telling you that it's not a good thing to argue with them about it. We need to be loving, and we need to use loving words, right? And when Paul talks about uh, words that have no profit for them that are hearing, we can literal that literally means we can discourage people from receiving the truth of the gospel and that's not what we want to do we want to encourage people but we don't have to sit there and get into arguments about how we believe differently what we have to get into is showing them how we live amen second timothy let's move on to uh verse uh, two, second timothy 2 15 says this be diligent to present yourself to prove to God, a worker who does, who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Remember that, rightly dividing the word of truth. And 2 Timothy 2.15 in the King James, I read it first out of the, of the New King James, the King James says this, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I want to look at that word study, right? Study to show thyself approved of God. That word study in the Greek means to be prompt, to diligently ende endeavor to labor and study. And if we, if we look at where it goes on to say, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, what I just told you to keep in your mind, rightly dividing the word of truth, that word dividing in the Greek means to dissect, expound, and correctly, uh, di correctly the divine message. So dividing means to dissect, expound, and correctly the divine message. So we, what are we uh, rightly dividing the word? Well, we're divide, dividing and dissecting the message of God through Scripture. 
So 2 Corinthians says this in chapter 13 uh, and verse 1 says, This will be the third time I am coming to you by the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let every word be established. Hang in here one second because I actually, I think we talked about this um, I don't know if we talked about Sunday or Faith and Healing School, about how important it is to rightly divide the Word of God. Well, what does that mean? It means Scripture will always support Scripture, right? If you see something in one place in the Word of God, and you hear a minister talk about it, right, and, and they're talking about it and presenting it in a way that just doesn't seem to sit well in your spirit, you need to go look it up because the word of God, scripture will always support scripture. For example, if you look at Isaiah chapter 53, where health and healing is concerned, it says by Jesus stripes, um, we've been healed. And then uh, second Peter, first Peter 2 24 says you were healed. That's two places where the scripture is referenced, right? And then if you look into John chapter 12, I believe, Jesus references the scripture in Isaiah chapter 53, where Isaiah is prophesying about Jesus. So rightly dividing the word of God means it's got to be or come out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Now that can be people, and we're going to look at that in a second, where, you know, we, we say, well, we're two or three, you know, out of the mouth of two or three people, right, as witnesses, but it also means the Word of God will confirm the Word of God. Scripture will confirm Scripture in two or three places. If somebody says something and presents a Scripture in a, in a, in a way that you can't find another place where the Word of God brings that to light, then there's something wrong. It's then an opinion. So scripture will always support scripture. Now, we also have another relationship where we can have two or three witnesses. If you see something in the word, you guys get up tomorrow morning, you're spending time in the word, maybe you're, you're looking into the word of God for something that's specifically going on in your life. Well, to know if, it's, if you're hearing something, and to know that it's from God, you will have two or three witnesses. And what I mean by that is you always have what's been put inside of you, something that you get on the inside. As you're reading the word of God, something comes to light. You see a scripture in a way you've never seen it before, and it's ministering to you about what you're seeking the Lord for. Well, you will get confirmation because you'll get something on the inside. You'll have the word and you have the Holy Spirit. So what do we wind up having when all three of those get together in the same way? You have the word, you, the word, and the witness. So you have two or three witnesses that are confirming what you're hearing. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys, but it's so important. You know, we've been talking about in Faith and Healing School this last, or this week, about the danger of a watered-down gospel and the danger of people, of, of false doctrines. And that's going to be more prevalent. The Word of God tells us that's going to be more and more prevalent in these last days. You know, we're living in the last of the last days. So we're going to see more of this. We're going to see a gospel that ministers preach to fit lifestyles of people that don't want to change, that want to come to church just to feel good about a specific way they're living, right? So the, the message is conforming to people rather than people conforming to the word. That's dangerous. That's why when somebody says something, you're watching somebody on Christian television, thank God for Christian TV, Right, But we have to carefully discern and rightly divide the Word of God when we're watching something on television so we know it is the uncompromised Word of God. Nothing added to it, right? And false doctrines. When we talk about things like false doctrines, we're talking about, you know, I, I'd venture to guess that you guys who are watching, if you come here to Abundant Grace Church and this is your home church, you know that divine health and healing belongs to you, right? But there are believers, there's churches out there that believe that 
it is no, not God's will to heal. That it's been done away with. That God will heal if he feels like it. That's not the truth. The truth is it's God's will that all be healed and walk in divine health and healing. But there's churches preaching out there that, well, if God wants to, he will. If he doesn't, he doesn't. If it's God's will, I will be healed. It already is God's will. But if you don't see that in the word, you have no light on it. You can't believe for it. So that's another good reason when we take it back to not having our words argumentative, right? If we, um, if we argue with people that don't believe the same way we do, and we sit there and we're ramming down their throat, well, I'm going to show you some scripture where it's God's will to heal don't have to argue with them. Give them, some, give them some light on the word. Give them some scripture that you stand on to support what you're saying in love. Encourage them to take another look. You know, take another look. But we don't have to argue with them and, and yell and scream to get them to think the way they do, you know, we do. All we have to do is plant a seed. Plant a seed and let God water it. Let God bring it to fruition in their lives. We don't have to argue them argue with them. But it is so important, friends, it's so important that we rightly divide the Word of God. And what's so cool about that, when you take time to, to you know, even any, everything I'm saying tonight, go back tomorrow, look up the verses of Scripture we're talking about, and find the other verses that support what we're talking about. You will find yourself on a Bible study journey that will build you up and strengthen you. Because you'll have multiple places in the Word of God to go to, you know, to, to, to deal with or, or stand on whatever you're standing on or whatever you're dealing with. It's awesome. We get the Word of God will take us down a path where we see more and more if we rightly divide the Word of God. You know, I always use the example of rightly dividing the Word and false doctrine in a situation my father-in-law dealt with, and many of you know this story, but where I'd walked into the house and he was watching somebody on television who was talking about sowing into their ministry, and if you did that tonight, you would receive your healing. There is nowhere that's found in the Word of God. But if you're a new believer, somebody that just started walking with the Lord, maybe you're not saved yet, and you're watching that on television, you believe in your heart of hearts because you heard a minister say it, that I can buy my healing. Friends, we have to be so, so careful. But getting back to 2 Timothy, Timothy goes on to talk about being careful of what we're saying. In, in verse 16, he says this, but shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. That word uh, shun means to stay away from. And vain babblings means, to, means empty-sounded words that is a fruitless discussion and vain. What is Timothy being told by Paul to do? Listen more and talk less. That's what he's telling him. Listen more. You don't have to say everything that comes to your mind. Stay away from that. We don't need to have talk about empty-sounding words. That's a fruitless discussion. Just listen. You know, if you're dealing with somebody that you've been ministering to, right? A family member, somebody from church, or your church, if this is your home church, or this church, doesn't matter. We don't have to go down a rabbit hole road of just words for the sake of talking. Listen to them, right? If you've got somebody that you've had a, an occasion to maybe argue with, like we were talking about, that doesn't believe the exact way you do, listen to them. Let them say what they have to say right? And then, like I said, bring the truth of the gospel to them. When we look a little further and deeper into, into verse 16, we just said shun means stay away from, vain babblings means empty sounding words, or a fruitless discussion in vain. That word increase, increase means will advance and drive forward, and ungodliness means wickedness. Friends, we should endeavor to do exactly what 2 Timothy 
chapter 2, verse 16 says. We need to stay away from just empty-sounding words so we don't push people away into an area of their life they don't want to or shouldn't be in. Amen? All right, so let's, uh, let's, that was kind of where we were at last week. I want to get into 2 Timothy verse uh, 2, uh, or chapter 2, verse 17 this morning, all right? And it's, or this afternoon, or evening, what are we? I don't even know what time it is. It's been a long day. <laughs> the, the, we're still in the New King James Version, it says this. And their message will spread like cancer. Hymenius and Philetus are of this sort. Before we get into breaking down this scripture, you do not, I repeat, you do not want to be like these two people. You don't want to be mentioned in the Word of God for doing something you shouldn't be doing. Now, this is pretty cool as we break this down. I want you guys really to hook into this. So, And their message, that word message is a Greek, Greek word meaning word. So their word spread like cancer. That word uh, spread is a Greek word meaning to eat. When we say something to somebody, we put our words out there. Have you ever heard the expression, well, so-and-so was talking to so-and-so, and and I was watching them, and they were just eating it up. That's what happens when we talk. You know, when we talk to people, no matter what we say, as we're saying stuff and putting it out there, our words, people will or have a tendency to eat it up, whatever you're saying. And that could be good or bad. In this case, these two people that Timothy was being told about by Paul were doing something wrong. Because why? At the beginning of the verse, he says their message or their words was being eaten up like a cancer. Now, I want to look at this verse, this word cancer. The King James Version calls cancer canker. Now, I know we've talked, we've, everybody knows what a canker sore is or a cold sore, that kind of thing. But that's not what this word canker means. It's the Greek word, and I know a lot of you are going to be surprised by this because I was when I took a look at it. It's the Greek word gangrenia, and it's the word we get gra- gangrene from. Paul is telling Timothy that empty words and fruitless discussions will lead to ungodliness and are like a deadly disease. We all know what gangrene is. It's basically your tissues, if somebody has gangrene, are dying. And our words that we speak to people, that they eat up, can cause that to happen in people's lives. Friends, it's so important we get a hold of what we're saying to everybody. And that includes yourself. Like I said, go back to Sunday. We need to be careful what we're speaking out of our mouths because our words coming out of our mouth, we can eat them up. Our mind starts believing everything we're saying, and it leads to disease if we're speaking the wrong things. It leads to gangrene. a a, a rotting, dying situation, and that's not what we want. We don't want to be like these people that Paul is referencing in verse 17 of 2 Timothy. Amen? Verse 18 says this, who have strayed, the King James Version, that word strayed is erred, who's made a mistake, who's, who's messed up concerning the truth saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. These, and he's still talking about the same people he was talking about in verse 17. Well, what were they doing? They were preaching a falsehood which was causing others to stumble. That's why, friends, it's so important that we're in the Word every day. You know, somebody might be well-meaning that wants to come to you and talk about what they believe, but they could be preaching a falsehood. 
just like we were talking about a few minutes ago. They can be preaching a falsehood that will cause you to stumble. And we certainly don't want to do that to others. But the only way we can't be caused to stumble or we can't cause anyone else to stumble is to be in the Word. You know, the Word of God tells us that we need to not only hear the Word, but we need to be doers of the Word right? We have to hear the word and do the word, but we have to know what we're hearing and we have to know what we're doing. And it's only found, or we can only get it when we spend time in the word of God. It is so important. The word of God is medicine to us, but yet so many believers neglect to spend any time in the word. You know, at this last of the last days, we really need to double time it in the word. Why? Because we need to know that what belongs to us. Because in these last days, as the enemy comes harder, and again, not to frighten anybody, but as the enemy comes harder because he knows his time is short, his sole purpose is to get you outside of God's will for your life, to get you off the road God's put you on to fulfill whatever he's called you to do. And if we don't know what the word says, that can happen. And it can happen very, very sneakily. You know, we, we know the devil is wily, right? The, the Word of God tells us to, to be aware of all the wiles of the devil. He can be sneaky, right? And how can he come? Can he come through somebody with a distorted scripture presenting it in a way that's a falsehood? Absolutely. And if we don't know that in our heart of hearts, if we don't know that we have to rightly divide the word when somebody says something to us that mm, just didn't sit well on the inside, then we can have a problem. But if we spend no time on the road, uh, in the word, we'll eat up everybody's words, find ourselves in confusion, frustration, and wind up exactly where the enemy wants us to be. Verse 19 says this, and friends, this is exactly what we were just talking about. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. In order to not stray from the truth of the word, we have to have a solid foundation built on Christ. It's that simple. It's that simple. You know, if, if you find yourself in a position tonight where there's a circumstance in your life that's been hanging around for a while, have you, that's my question to you right now, have you spent time in the Word to see what the Word says about what you're dealing with? Because when you do that, and if you haven't done that, can you honestly say that your life has been built on a solid foundation of Christ? It can't be, because how do we know the face of God, the characters of God? what Jesus did for us on the cross, what belongs to us. How do we have that solid foundation without spending time in the Word? There's a two-word answer. You can't. You can't. We can't build on a foundation that is not true because it will crumble. Our foundation must be built on the truth of the Word, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 says this, Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and straw. That's a problem. When we build on that, right? When we build on wood, hay, and straw, and gold, and silver. You know, people look at that verse of Scripture and say, Well, gold's kind of cool. Silver's kind of cool. Yeah, for decoration, well, you would never want to build on a foundation of gold. Anybody who knows anything about gold, even if you've had a piece of gold, if you've had a gold nugget or a little piece of gold flake, you can bend that, you can twist that. It's actually a soft, weak metal. And so is the same thing with silver. And wood, hay, and straw, right? 
is wood, hay, and straw as good as building on a foundation of concrete and iron? No. You know, I was reading, I was uh, reading uh, last couple days, Sparkling Gems from Rick Renner. And it's no coincidence, he was talking about this very thing we were talking about. And he was talking about when Paul wrote this scripture, when he talked about building, uh, having buildings made of uh, wood stubble or wood stone and, and wood hay and straw and wood, wood uh, uh, yeah, what is it? Wood stubble, stubble? Stumble, one, wow, right out of my head. You guys know what I'm talking about. Wood, hay, and straw, or um, the, the fact that Paul was, was really using the illustration of Rome and the slaves' quarters. And the slaves' quarter were bu built on wood, stubble, and hay. That's it. There you go. And what did that mean? And, and the Romans' buildings, you know, the non-slaves, the ruling class, were built all out of magnificent marble and, and granite and those type of things. And what would happen was a fire would break out in, these, in the areas of Rome. Well, would you find it hard to believe that those buildings made from granite and marble were singed but never crumbled? But the slaves' quarters that were made out of wood, stubble, and hay, and straw wound up burning to the ground. Because why? They were not built of something solid. We need to build upon something solid. And we can find that right here in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 and 25. The Word of God is so, so good, so cool. It gives us everything we need. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. I want to close with this tonight. If, if you look at this verse of Scripture in Matthew chapter 7, when we look at that house built on the foundation of the rock, maybe you're in a situation tonight, something's coming against you, your life. Maybe it's a sickness or an illness, financial lack, relationship, business, work, whatever it is, you guys know. You know, you guys watching know what you're dealing with. And it feels like the rains are coming, the floods have come, the winds are blowing and your house feels like it's getting beaten down. We can look at this in verse 25 of Matthew 7, that these are the things that the enemy's trying to come against you with, right? Trying to bring against you, to get you in a point where you just don't want to go on, where you want to quit. And it feels like your house is going to fall. Well, I've got good news for you. Unlike building a house in the natural, where the foundation has to go up first and the rest of the house is built. God is so cool. He's so patient. He's so merciful where we're concerned. He will allow you, if you've built a foundation on something that's crumbling, to go back and rebuild that foundation. And it's real simple. Friends, if one of you out there tonight, or all of you, or some of you, I don't know, is dealing with something, and your foundation, you know that based on what we're talking about tonight, your foundation isn't strong enough. You can go back and rebuild that foundation. What does that mean? You might ask me. I'm glad you asked. What that means is you can go back and get into the Word. Find what the word is saying about what you're going through, right? But not only find one scripture, find other scriptures to rightly divide the word of God, right? Where you can see more and more and have more and more revelation about what you're dealing with. And all it takes is a bit of commitment on our parts. You know, if you take medicine, for something that's going on in your body. And there's nothing wrong with doing that, right? If you take medicine, do you say, get up in the morning and say, 
I just don't feel like taking it today. I'm not in the mood. Probably not. You probably get up in the morning, take your medicine, right? I know I have a um, little divider from my, the supplements I take, right? Vitamins and all that stuff. And I have them broken up by days. So I don't forget to take them out of the bottle. I line them up in my, my supplement holder. And there's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I don't forget to take them. But so many of us are getting up in the morning not taking our spiritual medicine. And how in the world can we build a found, strong foundation that won't crumble when circumstance comes if we're not spending real time in the Word? Friends, we have to. How does faith come? How does faith come to stand against everything that the enemy tries to bring? Or anything you're going through. It comes by hearing. And hearing what? The word. The anointed, uncompromised word of God will put you on that firm foundation where your house cannot crumble. Friends, it's good news that God made provision for you today to go back and rebuild your foundation. We can do it. You can do it. We all can do it. You know, we need more and more of the word than ever before. I believe that than ever before. You know why? It's not just about us. It's about others. It's about reaching people for the kingdom. I don't know about you, but you know, you go on social media, you talk to people every day. The world is in fear of what's going to happen next. What's going on? Look, we just had a transition of power in Washington. Okay. And for people are afraid. They just don't know. There's change going on. This is happening. That's happening. Friends, we sang that song tonight. We are no longer slaves to fear. Why? Because God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. But if we do not build our, our lives, our walks on a foundation of truth, we're never going to know that. But it, like I said, it's not just about us. It's who we can touch. You know, when you build that house on a foundation and you're around people, you know, we, we were talking tonight about words, fruitless words, putting our lives on example. When you do that and you're on that firm foundation and people know what you're dealing with, know what you're going through, and you go through it with joy in your heart, that, that ministers to them. But you can only do that with a firm foundation. And when you do that, you're going through stuff, people know what you're going through, and you're encouraging them, you're building them up, you're strengthening them. That person who may have argued with you about how they believe differently, when they're dealing with something, is going to come to you and say, man, I knew what you were up against. How did you get through that? And then those words no longer become fruitless. They are fruitful. When you can put your life on example and you can show them your foundation. So glory to God. We're going to pick up next week in 2 in second Timothy uh, chapter 2, probably verse 20. I think that's where we just left off. And uh, you know, I just want to encourage everybody, get in your word. Get in the word every day. Build that foundation on the rock of Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for the, for the ability to come tonight into people's homes through live stream. Father, we thank you for the technology. We thank you that you've, you've touched upon all of us, Father, that you've, you've pointed us in an area of change, Father, that you are strengthening us in our spirits, Father, as we take in more of your word. It is a medicine unto our bodies, Father, our flesh, our spirit. The word of God tells us that a strong spirit of a man sustains him. And as we dive deeper and feed on spiritual food, not the cancerous type of words that we looked at tonight, but your word, your words, spiritual food on the inside, it would produce for us spiritual things, Father. And we thank you for that. We thank you for all that you've done tonight. And we say, bring glory to yourself in Jesus' name. And 
We thank you guys for joining us. Just a reminder, we will be here uh, tomorrow and Friday for Faith and Healing School at 10.30 a.m., so tune in in the same place. We'll see you then in Sunday service, also at 10 a.m., and we will keep you posted about when we will be back in for live services. So glory to God.